please note that this video contains spoilers. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Argo movie thoughts. I thought that the ending was slightly too enthusiastic. We just have several things that we don't quite believe. I'm, I'm talking about the, the very end wrap-up, after the, the plane has flown and all this stuff. Case in point, why does Tony's wife take him back? There's really been no... Yeah, um, is that... isn't that even the first time we see her? Does she even get a line? She, she's just there and she looks like sad, like she might be regretting and then they hug, and I'm sitting there thinking, dude, dude, be careful of those hands, do not go south, she, she's not ready for that yet, and that's kind of it, I, I really feel like the whole, yeah, T Tony's sort of personal story was not thoroughly developed, especially, like I say, with if, if we're actually going to have him get back with his wife at the end, you need to give them at least a little bit of screen time, just something. What, was it the card he sent that said, love you both, and underlined, I guess, that one or over? I guess they didn't have that big problems. Why, why are things going to get better now? He's still, you know, exfiltration expert. There might be some more... Yeah, I just, I don't see what turned it around. He didn't go and quit the CIA or some kind of, what, did she find out about the medal? Is it like she's, she's really happy that he got the people home? I just didn't really, it seemed like they just wanted to wrap up everything and give everything a nice happy ending. I'm, from the look on her face, I'm guessing he's going to get a happy ending. It just, yeah underdeveloped, and like I say in the review, I just do not buy him as this big alcoholic smoke, you know, he, he puts the, the wine or champagne, I don't know, I can't tell those things apart, in, in his bag and goes home with that, or go, goes back to the hotel room with that, and the, this whole, and throws it on the bed, and the whole, and that's a, this is a good time to talk about the, the part where the movie stops being quite credible, where it starts getting contrived, when, when he's told by Cranston, the, you know, we're, we're pulling out, the, the, you you fly you're gonna fly back without them, and he decides that he will get them out, and he just calls them and then hangs up immediately after telling him that, and then he has to get the tickets, and they're like, oh, that that has to be signed off by Jimmy Carter, and he has to get Jimmy Carter to, to grant the tickets, and you know they're standing there, oh, the the tickets just the reservations just came through, sir, and. You know, they, they buy that, the, that, that they're a movie crew at the different checkpoints. I do think that the setup of the checkpoints was quite nice. It was still incredibly, and, and no one wrong, it was still incredibly tense. I, I nearly passed out from just, it, just so, yeah, that's an exaggeration. But it's an it's incredibly tense movie. And the, the way he, we, we hear him tell them, about the different checkpoints, and then when they get to, to the different ones, you're sitting there going over in your head, okay, that's the first checkpoint, that's the second checkpoint, oh no, that's the third checkpoint with the guards, and you have the, and I was, I mentioned the review, a 
because this the the one really bad guy. Well, him and there's that other guy who goes to the the house and talks to the housekeeper as well. I, I really love that moment as well when you think she might give them away and you're like, oh, can can they trust her? And they're talking like all friendly, and then she's supposed to answer, how long have the, the ambassador's guests been here? As it just break and two days. And it's perfect. This. Yeah, so so they could trust her, she sided with them, and this thing of, you know, the, the, uh, afterwards she, she moves to her Iraq, I would as well, yeah, and, but, but anyway, yeah, they, they get to the, the, I don't know, the, the military guys, and they have to convince them, and the, the military guys figure it out, but then they just miss them, and they go after them in cars, and I will say that scene was about as tense a scene as I've seen with uh, like people in cars trying to stop a plane from taking off since like Face Off, so that's, that's pretty good, it's like 15 years. So. Anyway, anyway, the I I liked the various bits of of this the way a movie a Hollywood movie can really capture people's imagination. Like I mentioned in the review as well, the you know Tony gets the idea from watching the one of the Planet of the Apes movies with his son, although they're in different places, and he, he gets he gets engrossed and he, he kind of realizes that's, that, that's a way that, that would make sense and that would convince people, and then, you know, and, and at the very end you have all those Star Wars toys that I'm sure Disney, if it was if this movie was produced late enough, or maybe George Lucas, if it was produced early enough, we're very happy to have them, yeah, to have in the movie. And then, you know, you have the Hollywood scenes where people are completely buying in, and you have the, the extravagant costumes, you have the, you know, the, the woman in revealing clothing, you have the big black guy looking very heroic, and all these things that, yeah, that very much looked like this cheesy 70s, you know, sci-fi thriller, or sci-fi, yeah. Although, did they actually wear that little clothing, the, the women? Maybe I need to check out more of those movies. Anyway, yeah, it, it's... And, and you have those scenes of, of everyone buying it and everyone getting into it. Oh, this big art, this big movie, you know. And they're, they're Hollywood people, but... It's, and, and then you have the... The... The, the Iranian military, or whatever. Kind of... Buying the story. And, and we see them going... Ah, and looking at the storyboards, which they get to keep. And it, it, it inspires them, because they're, they're people, they like this, these fantastical stories, everyone does. And I, I just think that worked really well. It, it kind of helps to explain, you know, it, it worked because it was this fantastical... I mean, if it had been something boring, people might not have yeah, there's just something about how we, we want to believe in things like that. And so sometimes we do, even when it doesn't necessarily make sense. And yeah, it's and also though I did feel like it came a little out of left field, the the guy who spoke Farsi also being this good a storyteller, but yeah, I don't know, I guess he just went into his you know, backstory so much. Anyway, he, you know, not only does he explain the story and, oh, look at the storyboards, and, 
he also, you know, that when the guy challenges him, why do why you speak Farsi? And, and he's like, of course I speak Farsi. I, you know, shooting a movie in Iran. And, and if you stop and think about it, that doesn't make sense. I do, okay, so is he the interpreter that they brought along? But the, the fact that he responds so quickly and so decisively, it, it makes him believe it because that, that's really what they're going for. You know, they're, they're trying to put you, they're, they're trying to ask those very direct, harsh questions that, you know, get you off guard and thus you, 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 you crack under, under that pressure, but he didn't crack and so he buys it and the thing, you know, getting the, the phone call, and then again, contrivance with the guys, you know, the, the two hot guys waiting for that shoot to be over because they have to get to the production and, and finally they just walk through, Could, contact my agent, okay, I'm, I'm going to be part of the movie, contact my agent. And they just, exactly like gets the phone, and he's like, hey, man, I speak with, you know, I don't remember the fake name, I don't think it was Tony Mendes, but anyway. And, and then he said, oh, he's, he's uh, in Iran shooting a movie, or, or location scouting in Iran, something like that. And he hangs up, and okay, they can go through, and the Swiss are, okay, we'll, we'll open our doors again. And of course they don't call the control room and tell them, don't let that plane take off. Instead, they just run after it and drive after it, and only afterwards do they get into the control room again. Freddy can drive, but it was it was tense. I I do wish that the that they would have stuck with it being completely credible. I suppose that might more or less cover it. You you can probably tell the. In, in the review, I mentioned that there are these couple of sequences that are really claustrophobic. You probably already know which those are. But, excuse me, in case there's any doubt, it's when they're in the car on the way to the bazaar, and when they are at the bazaar, and they have these confrontations with people. You know, when, when they're driving to the bazaar, there are these, you know, at first they're in front, and then, you know, and, and then they, some people come from behind as well, and they're, they're locked in, and they, and they have to slowly drive past as people make way for them, and they just, they're the scapegoat, they, they, they look Western, they, they, these people might not even think that they're Americans necessarily, but they look Western, and they, these people have just suffered for, for decades because of Western powers and they're, they're furious and they finally, finally, they are allowed to express this, this tension, this, this fury and it, it hits anyone who, who looks and, and there were people hung from, from these cranes and and I thought that was powerful as well, that at the end when we see these images matched up with how, how it looks in the movie and how it was in real life. And that, sure enough, there is a person hanging from a crane. I also thought this... I don't know if it's sort of intentional, but this movie does point out that the, the people carrying out mock executions, they're the bad guys. The, they, they are not ones to mimic, you know. And I don't know if it was really supposed to do that, or if it was just because that happened. But I, I thought that was effective, intentional or otherwise. Anyway, the, yeah, the, the scene in the car, and I also like how, at the end of that, he, he asks, What's your name and what do you do for all of them? Because that's kind of if you know it now. After that, there's no way the there's no way you will crack under the pressure. 
and then they get to the bazaar, and, and the, the director is asked, what, is the movie about this or that? No. <laughs> and, and um, okay. And then in the bazaar, she's taking pictures, because she's location scouting, she's just playing her role, and then suddenly the, the guy is, you know, I, I want the picture, and no, but she, 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 this is her job, and she, I have not given you permission to, to take that picture, and, oh, okay, to, to take the picture, it's, it's fine, and then he, he drops the bombshell. My kid was killed with an American weapon. And, and that's when, it, and, and you see the, the other men, you know, a, approaching, and just this, yeah, really, really suffocating atmosphere. And, and you, you can't conde condemn the, uh, the, the poor old guy for that, because you, you completely understand, you'd be furious as well, if, if that was you and your family, and yeah, I, I really, it's, it's a rare case when a movie makes you sympathize with the borderline lynch mob. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.